paint your crook. Yeah, but Thunder, you just lost the game. God damn it. If it's not one fucking Lockhart, it's the other, you know? Look, uh, I'm just here to sub in. I'm doing my job. That's, you know, that's that's fair. That's fair. Elena's here because uh, Lolly is, you know, he's off doing Lolly things as he does. Uh, and I am, uh, I'm playing Beacon Pines tonight because uh, Perny picked it and it's a game that's on Game Pass. That means it's on the Xbox and it's ready for me to play. The Xbox is right over, it's over there, but it's on my screen over here. Over it is, where? Uh, over, over there, over there. Under there? No, no, it's not under there. It's actually on top of several things, you see. Uh, mm -hmm. It is It is one, one and game, one and game. Yeah, I've I've heard lots of good things about this. I saw like very briefly Matt Calder play it several months ago, um, but I didn't, you know I was busy, so I didn't get a chance to really like dive into it while he was playing. But uh, I'm looking forward to this, so this should be good. Um, all right, let's uh, let's let's just do it. Let's just go. In honor of your favorite Lockhart. Oh yeah, that's. I wouldn't call him my favorite Lockhart. All right, let's let's not get let's not get let's not get out of hand here. Let's not get out of control. Uh, he's uh, my favorite Lockhart. Well, of course he's your favorite Lockhart. You picked him. Exactly. Uh, listen, sorry if I end up doing some snifflies tonight, folks. Uh, my sinuses have been playing hell on me today. Um, thankfully, Beans had it, and she's she's finally feeling better today. Um, mine are being like ugh, today. It's just like everything is right here. Now as dark as my soul. Oh no, Fritz. There's no. That's hold on, hold on. That's Thunder closer. Skull is like a squishy marshmallow. That's closer to the darkness of my soul, but still that's, not your, quite. Your soul is not that dark. It's, You're it's, a squishy marshmallow soul. No, I'm a squishy marshmallow bear, but in my inside, my soul is very dark. It is all the tree jizz. I'm You're telling a squishy you, like, marshmallow bear down to the soul. Oof. No, well, down to, like, the soles of my feet, perhaps. Ice bear needs it for everyday hustling. <gasps> Amy, happy Friday. Thank you for 20 heckin' months. Look, we have both Fritzes here. I love when there's both Fritzes. Ooh, there's a continue button. Have you heard of second Fritz? A I, yeah. <laughs> I've had first Brunch Fritz, Fritz, yes. Now let's see what this thing's all about. Ooh, wait, I have a thing for this. Like 720 realized you did not eat any food, there is now food on the way. Aw, oh, yes. I'm glad food is on the way, Tom. We got Snooshy we tonight. To eat at least and food. Ooh. Maybe a couple. Dear reader. Ooh. Hey, it's a Taylor Swift song. Allow me to introduce you to my book. Okay. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. Is it a magic book? You may therefore have some misunderstandings. No, about it's an its unordinary book. Oh. Or an extraordinary book. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Well, settle down. You're making a lot of assumptions, book author person, okay? You're pretty special. Um, Can confirm. You're mm -hmm. special. Without you, there is no story. Uh, now, okay, now you're, now you're getting out of handbook. Perny, you should purchase Chapter Anfood. One. Chapter one. Look at the little tree wiggle. Look at the doop doop doop. It's doing little tree wiggly things over there. Normal isn't is that called blowing in the breeze? I th I don't know. I'm not I'm not a treeologist. I'm not really sure. Up to a couple gummies. About to be higher than God's bald spot. <laughs> what, what if? I mean, it depends on which bald spot. Ooh. 
<laughs> Chapter one, normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Up, oh, up. Oh, they said the thing. It's the thing. It's the thing. It's the Untitled. thing like it says over there. It's the thing. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy I just want to know why it's a down. shallow valley. I don't know. Maybe the mountains are very small. Maybe they're short. When the, the hills? Not necessarily. Is what if they got... Then? What if they still got them, like, really, like, peaks, but they're not, like, super tall? They're just kind of tall. Hmm. Or maybe the... Maybe the mountains are like far apart, so like the valley doesn't dip down like, like deep down like that. Maybe it's like zoop like that, so it's a shallow valley because the mountains are far apart. Okay, okay, all right, I'm with you. It's a thought. So maybe we'll find out why it's shallow. I Ooh. Doubt it. Okay, Perny, get 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 acquire yourself one and food. Okay, Luca Van Horn. <laughs> Oh. Oh boy. Well, this is off to a start. Yeah? Anybody anybody I know? Who, who might be in chat with me right now? Right, right. Some, yeah. Anyone specific? <laughs> local Elena's might know. Great the local candy. Elena Great might candy. Be less subtle than you think. Mm. Lolo finally noticed the tears swelling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. A Chivo, a charmed life, found a charm. Huh. Okay. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Okay, book lady. Every time she tells me to do something, I want to do the opposite. Rollo looked to the side suspiciously. Oh boy. Rollo's about to get, get us in some fucking trouble. We just started this thing. They might be watching. Location. Rush has been fifteen dollars. Get a free ten-piece nug seal. Oh, Tom, are you about to be in possession of bonus nugs? Hmm. <laughs> Love. Well, uh, you know, it's better than nugs. Bonus nugs. 
I don't do well with new people. Hold on. Okay, so so Rolo is both lacking subtlety and not does not do well with new people. And and also appears to <laughs> be a <humorous>. cat. <laughs> right? Right? I'm I'm starting to see a a theme with Rolo here. Listen, I'm the evidence is building up pretty fast there, pal. Uh Matt Matt, you don't do well with new people. You don't do well with old people. You don't. You just don't people. New has to do. Has nothing to do with it. <clears throat> yeah, you just. You just don't people, Matt. I was mm. also devious as a child, so even Rolo's deviousness does not oh, rule yeah. this out. Ma Matt's Matt's over here like people, not even once. <laughs> uh, Matt, how you doing, buddy? I was just talking about you, about how I got to catch like tiny glimpses of you playing this I don't know, months ago and half a year ago is still new to Rolo, which yes <laughs> can confirm okay, Six but people are literally the long. worst though mm. concept of the MySpace top 8 to heart, only like 8 people and that's it that's that's fair buddy I th Matt, I think I can probably name most of the 8 Wait, Matt, are we including your, your like are you including yourself in your top 8 or is like is it eight other people? Oh Jesus, putting up with myself is a whole work, so I feel like you have to include yourself. Use the old T-Mobile Fave 5. That's Oh, that's a that's a throwback too. I like that. This is great. <laughs> Oof, ouch, Matt, but also I feel that. Let's see. For Matt, I can name at least I can name at least 5. Fritz, thanks for the lurk, buddy. Enjoy dinner. I can name at least five, which includes his wonderful wife, Erin, Brian, Jalen, me, and Bean. Those are those are five of the eight right there. If you're not, <laughs> take bets on whether you're one of the other three. Actually, Lemon's probably one of the other ones. <laughs> Tell Grand before heading out with Rolo. All right. All right. So I got. I got. I forget what this is called, but a I charm. have one. A charm. Thank you. And I have a task list. Oh, seen seen like the the pseudo handwritten task list like this, makes me kind of want to play Untitled Goose Game. Do it. Matt, enjoy dinner. Tell Aaron I said hi and that we love her. Aaron's Dear wonderful. Reader, forgive me for this interlude. I will um, not. Yeah. More of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Okay. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. And more covered in flowery fabric. One of his father's old stethoscopes, Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. Ponder. Hey, I, I I can ponder things now. That's dangerous. Oh, did you see? Okay, okay. Watch the watch the way watch the way he slides out of the chair. He's like, zoop. Come on. How many of us, when we were kids and we were small and sitting in the big cozy comfy chair, we just slide off of the chair? Because we're that's the only way to exit the chair, right? That's what I thought. The fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Grandmotherly obligation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just some dusty knickknacks. Nick snacks, patty wax. Give a dog a bone. Anything in here? No. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. God damn. 
Grand had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Hide, look at that dusty knickknacks is your <laughs> That's I thought your name I thought your name was Paddywhack, because you know you're you're Irish. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Chill? Look at all these Y'all look at all of these things that all these charms that I've got. Look at this. This is great. I'm doing great. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been <laughs> crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Read? Just brag about it, why don't you? That's the first non-Rolo thing. Well, you don't like to read late into the night. You don't like to stay up terribly late, in fairness. When I was that small, I did. Well, that's that's a good point, yeah. I also do end up awake in the middle of the night, so... The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Neat. Oh, I can jump. Hey, look at that. Dull scissors, a broken <laughs> can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Sounds like a Barney bag. Junk. Sounds like what? A Barney bag. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, Did core I memory just unlocked. Did unlock a core memory? Oh god. Oh man, I remember that. Okay, so now that you've brought that up, I know many of us, especially at our age and slightly older, remember Barney, the big purple dinosaur, okay? Microsoft partnered with whoever the hell the production company was, and they made an interactive Barney that you could get and, like, you could, like, do stuff with, like talk to it and shit like that and it would like talk back to you it was really wild so a giant furby kinda yeah like it was it was like it was pretty big like it was it was a good size but yeah microsoft had this like interactive barney that they sold it was An array kinda of wild prepared meals crowded the refrigerator. i love prepared meals Each labeled with the day of the i week. feel like barney furby is like horror feed. Eh. It was... It was uncanny, to say the least. Alright, I guess I have to go outside. Why? This is quite exciting. I am now certain that this you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. Frickin' gone. Hi, I'm Miss Sally Beth. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. Spe Look, uh, I love that she's like, excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic, and then Lolly shows up. Is it me? Am I the drama? <laughs> Am I the drama? Hmm. Hmm. Are you the drama? I can be. Oh boy. I, I mean, you are the Italian. Oh well, that's that's so, that's definitely have, some flair. Have you have you found the pine that has bacon yet? No, but I'm still working on it. As you can see, there are several trees, and not all of them are pine. So you know, he's always the drama. It's true. You are about to encounter learned how to first chill. turning point. Oh shit! Okay, this seems important. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. 
A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Okay, all right. Look, what a, what a wholesome, sweet-looking grandmother. <laughs> okay, I tell Gran. Tell Gran I'm going to hang out with Rolo. Hold up now. Don't worry about it. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. Oh. I bet she knows where the bacon pine is. Hide or chill. I like I chill. Like one of those is the correct answer. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. You all, you boys, listen. We like doing nothing. Okay. Me and Lolly and Tom have been trading and doing nothing for years. We've got entire careers built on doing nothing. Hey, 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 I... why am I left out of this? Well, because you're not a boys. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's she specifically said okay. boys, so otherwise I would have okay. included you. We, okay. we work really hard so that we can do nothing as much as humanly possible. Oh, I also probably am the worst of doing nothing at doing nothing. Of yeah, no, you, 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 I, I don't know that you've ever done nothing in your life. I, yeah, uh, Miss Future Senior Analyst. On I, look, I told you you can't say that yet. I mean, I think you just did. We stick to what we're good at. Oh, oh man, me, Tom, and Lolly are great at doing nothing. Okay, so I feel like Luca is Lolly and you. Yeah, that's probably fair. Rolo might be me. Yeah. I'm sure you're done chilling in time for Easy. supper. Okay. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. <laughs> Gran's like, go, get out of here. She she waved her fucking cane at us. <laughs> Without too much of a mess. The power of charms. A single word can change everything. I see, Amy loves doing nothing. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. What the f- What? No, that's- What? The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. Oh, God. Oh, God. Elena, this truly is a game for you. It's a cute narrative story where you, it has a literal decision tree. I love it. You can see the turning point, which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. What? Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Did I understand this correctly? This tree is full of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff? I think yeah. so. Hi, Salty. How are you? Listen, I'm not to not to put too fine a point on it, but that's a that's a Jewelia emote. I recognize them when I see them. We were gonna go ponder for the day. We were just gonna go ponder for the You day. ordered and food? Congratulations, Pretty and Proud you. What'd you get? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? This was Lucas' chance to sell. Optimization his of how to do nothing. Big stuff. Small stuff, medium, mostly medium pondering. It. Burger, fries, and chips and queso. Oh, oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Salty, I'm doing okay. I got like a sinusy thing going on, so if I sound a little off tonight, that's why. But otherwise, it's uh, well, it's been a week. <laughs> 
though make sure you don't overburden yourself with a preponderance of pondering. AKA don't give yourself anxiety. Okay. Now that other Lockhart has clocked in, I am I am clocking out. Well Good have luck, fun. Have thanks. Fun. Thanks for hanging Use out. Use your words wisely. Okay, bye. Bye. And she's gone. Just I like guess. that. Was she even here? We'll never know. We'll never know. All right, let's try hide and see what happens. We were just gonna go hide for the day. Hide. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. All right. Well, I did all three of them that I could do there. Yay! I learned how to do stuff. Doop 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 doop. Lolly, just watch you. Doop doop doop. That's you. Doop 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 doop. Roll 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 roll. Doop 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 doop. Luca, stay out of trouble. <laughs> Get into trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma, stay out of trouble. Luca immediately gets a quest to go get into trouble. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I don't think that I will. <laughs> That's a hundred percent. Okay, this is why you are Luca and, well, so far we've determined that, that Elena is Rolo. <laughs> What's that? Oh. What am I doing here? Just just hanging out. I'm learning stuff. It's very narrative and very game. Come on, come on. Dang it. Welcome to Bacon Pines. The welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Yes. Chapter two. Okay, Tom, what's what's that specific color code? Just brown. All right, that's fair. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Welcome to Bacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered. Oh, it's brown because there's a fertilizer company. Huh? Huh? Until the foul... Uh, harvest. no, it's brown it because it's seven. Tom and Poop. Yeah, that's what... Where do you think the fertilizer comes from, buddy? In the six years since, right, I'm just being more direct about it. I see. I see. <laughs> Butts. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. We have Crumble, and I'm going to go serve it, so I will be RB. <laughs> he had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. Hungry for poop. I think, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what just happened. Hungry for, for poop. It really nailed the artistic design of a CEO, right? Hmm. 
I love the sounds of them talking. It's it's very it's very like eight eight or sixteen bit console. I love it. Oh now, the left side. Oh, all right. Very busy. Here, Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Wait, no. Chilling, you know, doing doing Lucas stuff. You know, no worries, not a care in the world. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. I'm sleeping. So if you were not in the know. Uh huh. Crumble sells a little plastic cookie cutter. I've seen the little plastic So that you can cutter. cut your cookies into quarters. Very nice for those that think their cookies are a little large. Is this is this in some some way related to the message that I just received in chat about needing to control my resident lolly? Uh no. No, that is because um, your advertising of Game Pass games has borne slight fruit. Oh? On, on Steam, but yes. Is it perhaps this particular Game Pass game? Maybe. I see. I see. Would it potentially be something that was gifted to uh, other local Lockhearts in your area? Anonymous, yes. Yes. It was an anonymous gift, you see. Oh, I see. It was a, because you gifted it to Anonymous. Mm -hmm. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's out of control. Well, you know, listen, he's he's Italian. You can't contain that energy. The king of Nichols. <laughs> Tom, Tom, are you the freaking king of nickels? One of the cookies have marinara sauce. Yes, one of the cookies had marinara sauce. He pulled a pen from the pocket hmm. of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Phone booths. Oh, I love phone. I had a phone booth once. Oh, Bowser. Enjoy your new game, Elena. Thoughts. Bacon pines? The bacon. <laughs> and also the pines. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. P. 
Pete, what is wrong with you? I hear Bowser barking, so I go out there to look, and he's antagonizing the neighbor dogs through the, uh, through the fence. And their owner is yelling at them. And I'm like, look, bud, look what you did. You got them in trouble. And then he starts having the zoomies like he's going. Woof, 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 woof. Gee, I wonder where he gets that from. He, I, was, I don't know where he gets that from. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no way of knowing. We'll never know. We'll, we'll never know. <laughs> Jets on. Is Jetson a raccoon? Looks, he looks like a little raccoon. Hmm. Falling asleep at the reel. I like that. That's good. That's cute. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and mm. fish until sundown. I love sandwiches. Oh, man. I can't believe I did all of this for sandwiches. But then again, Luca sandwiches. And picked the perfect bait. It is, Perny. It really is. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. I mean, I heard there were sandwiches. Good for skimming the surface. Yep. Tom, he, uh, Zunder said it earlier. If you come to his house, he'll make you a sandwich. It's true. If you come to my house, I will make you a sandwich. I've done it before. I'll do it again. So help me God. It's just a 20 minute drive. It's fine. That's fine. It has happened. It's true. I made a mistake once too. I've probably made a mistake a couple of times, but the last time he was here, I made a mistake and boy, howdy. It was some steak. Bernie, you gotta come down. It's just a 20 minute drive from Iowa. Oh. Luca gently baited out for skimming the surface. Here we go back to Florida on purpose. That's a fair point. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? I like a good shoestring <laughs> potato. Hi, man. Your face is a shoestring. I'll shoestring your face. Um. Kinky? Maybe? Maybe. Hey, I caught a... Did I catch a boot? Luca gently baited a feather on... Good for skimming the surface. Right, let's try this again. Hey, I caught a rubber ducky. Right. Well, I'll be switched. <laughs> it's your old rubber now ducky. Now you can program. That's true. Much like this rubber ducky that I have right here. Rubber ducky, you see. <laughs> rubber ducky. Just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Loaf sometimes is a drooling ball of fur, depending on, you know, how extra... Honk, fuck off. <laughs> Well done, Brian. Well done, hi, buddy. You, I'm eating the spaghetti. It's like a Italian buongiorno, Ferrari, Alfredo, Lamborghini Diablo. Matt, perfect. No, no, that's that's I've, that's the best Italian I've ever heard, and I know several Italians. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it again. Let's see what else I can catch. Oh, I did both. Luca gently baked for skimming the. Eh, I already did it, but. Let's see if I can get anything else. 
frantic hand gestures. Just don't forget to bibbity and bobbity. New bait. Okay. Oh. Dang. Mission control authorized personnel only. Yeah, man, Matt, you should see, uh, you should see Lolly when he gets, when he goes full Italian, his hands go everywhere. It's wild. The boys had a good thing going, as long as they kept it's true. happy. I have some online friends that took an impromptu trip to Italy this weekend. Imagine just up and being like, like, like you're like the cat reading the newspaper meme and you're like, you're sitting there reading, you're like, I should go to Italy this weekend. Fucking Europeans. <laughs> they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. Wait. Take it easy, Ron Swanson. I flew over to Italy like no big, huh? Certain nights, Can you imagine? The clouds just... were just right. The boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Strange patterns of static. Paolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. It's probably aliens. Listen, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. That's all I'm saying. After Lucas, that's what taking to charge up the mental energy for that trip. Yeah. But think about it, like, all the best Italian food is there. So, like, you know, you do have some really good rewards when you get there. Rolo became obsessed with them building their own where they invented Italian food, you know. It would depend on what we're doing in Italy. Eating, per that's it. That's all the... I mean, yeah, you can get Olive Garden delivered to your house, but, like... But this is, like... You know, sit and eat food and look at mountains and shit, then let's fuck it. Yeah, see, exactly, Impertin. That's my point. That's my point. Like, <laughs> like 10k less. Well, I mean, yeah. But this is really good Olive Garden. Like, this is, this is the best Olive Garden. Touristy stuff? Eh, touristy. Eh, eh. They asked if I was joining them, and I was like, hey, yeah, let me whip out the 8K. I don't have to go to Italy for a week. Right? Like, right? It was some time before Luca realized it was Rollo's way of keeping him occupied. I can just chill here. Look at me chilling. I'm being chill. You know. Doing chill things. Like, chilling. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm alright, Matt. I got sinusy stuff going on, which is why I sound a little off tonight. But, uh, you know. <laughs> um, I'm doing the best I can with it. The Olive Garden and Grand Forks? No, Fritz, please. Regale us of the story of the Olive Garden and Grand Forks, North Dakota. That's uh, that's Fritz's old neck of the woods for those who are unfamiliar. Fritz is from that, that general vicinity. Who's glowing? Kinda. Just a busted old warehouse. Does anyone talk to Nova? Um, I talked. I I talked to her a few days ago. 
Um, just kind of in passing. And then uh, I talked to Q, her girlfriend. Uh, I actually had a meeting with her last night. Yeah, she's she hasn't been doing much of the shrimp shrimps lately. She's been really busy with work and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, she's okay. She's just really busy. Got a lot going on. Perfect, Fritz. Excellent. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, she's all right. She's all right. A flaming chicken coop sort of deal. Zoop. Okay, listen. Can we talk about the fucking, like, basically the car door that's out here? Because I'm into it. And... Yeah, so, so, but you got a new fence installed in your house and it looks amazing. As the neighbors can't see shit. Nice. Listen. Dish. Fucking home ownership, Pern. Am I right? Prolo <laughs> nearly killed himself. I, uh, got up into the tree. In the past couple of years, got a new fence installed and turn the, radio into an the only part of the fence that's four foot is the part that lets me uh it did at least talk to the people i actually like uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. and not the ones so, you don't uh, yeah yeah and the best part about it is is that like they also have vinyl so like i attached so i don't i don't have side fencing technically nice i didn't pay for it nice Hey, gold bond. Mm -hmm. Yours is wood, so much wood. Mm. Boy, howdy, there's a joke in there somewhere. Luca tied a small magnet to the line. Fishing with the law of attraction. Ooh. I got a key. That's so wild. Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. A whole neighbors this week about their fence. Your house was ever built. Breaking through into your yard. Mm. <laughs> Feel that you, depending on to know when you were going to fix their fence? What if they went and go fuck themselves? Okay, buddy. Hey, look, it's a town square. What's that say? Last Chance Diner. Hello? Fulton Wilder ran the local paper of record. The Beacon Beacon. Okay. That... That's how you name a newspaper. Impart your... Bacon bacon? Let me do impart your, your fist into her face. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I hear, as satisfying as that might be, it's frowned upon in most societies. That's... Yeah, yeah. in her igloo. News? The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Nope. <laughs> it was a big winning... Well, that's good. Good. Change? Uh-oh. The 
This looks like tr Oh no. Is this Rolo's mom? Oh, right. Or big sister? Maybe with Roxy. This is an important turning point. Uh-oh. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Yeah, this is... Yeah, Ooh. this is... That's... That's his sister. Oh, boy. <laughs> she said he's a blockhead. And say I have... Mm. Decided to split the cost. Well, that's nice. That's really nice of you, Matt. And Roxy, would I lie to you? Perhaps. Ooh, Bowser needs water, BRB. <laughs> oh boy. Rolo. Oh boy. Get into trouble with Rolo. Done. Oh, a little doggy gate would be really cute. That would be adorable. They could be friends. Bork, bork, friend, friend. <laughs> good friends just keeps bitch ass neighbors away so they seem like good neighbors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Morning chores were left unchored. Got choring to do, bud. Oh, with you, I'm sick and tired of digging up carrots. Is it to the broken boards? Well, there you go. There you go. as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Oh, God. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. The other thing Rage Roxy was to be a little chill. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. But sniffing buddies. Oh, man. It's so fun when dogs... Like, just, it's so funny when dogs are sniffing each other's butts. It's like, hey, hey, that's... All right, that butt's okay. That's, uh, you got a, you got a, you got a okay smelling butt there. Oh God, Zam's here. <laughs> Zam, no. Uncles don't take the time to smell each other's butts. That's when you know they have issues. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. Oh man. A full report. Investigate the Valentine warehouse alone. Nope. Cool, cool. <laughs> what are you up to? Nope. I just love this. Nope. Oh, fantastic. Understand, mate, what a great man can do given time. A bit much, if you ask me. Yeah. Indulgent. I like being indulgent. Oh, speaking of indulgent, Oreo has this new midnight, like, or blackout or something cake uh, flavor. So it's regular Oreo cookies. In the middle, there are two different types of chocolate cream. Ah. It's so good. Your face is so good. Oh, so good your face. Him. Got him. Hmm. They're just seeing if it's in their butt. We're like, where do you need to check? No. Stop it. No. I will not check my butt. Too absorbed in a book <clears throat> to be distracted. 
Have you ever considered checking your butt? No, not even once. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Mrs. Nelson? Just ask a doggo. Well, that's fair. That's fair, Tay. That's a good point. What's in here? Can I go? Right, not there. Not there, there. Okay. They'll tell me where to begin. Okay. Aha, there's people back here. Piper. The early bird gets the proper education required for a successful and fulfilling career later in life. Hmm. Oof. Piper. Piper. Oof. Piper, stop that. Look at these fucking nerds over here. Oh, they have. If you never do what you don't love, then you'll never... You know, I'm not even mad. Is there anything else I can do about here? I don't think so. Can I go in town hall? No, I cannot. Am I disappointed though? No, probably not disappointed either. Hold on over here. Bert? Hey, Bert. Fact checking. Found that there were only seven citizens, and they all worked for a mining company. No, that's I'd heard that. And they all want sun chips. And they all want sun chips. There are six miners outside, and they all want sun chips. The one dirt road leading to town, and there still is only one road leading to town. The History Museum is a tent. Yes, it's true. It's true. <laughs> they don't. They didn't have a budget for like you know, s like hard walls. Buds and bulbs sounds like it sounds like a hardware store <laughs> dispensary. That's it. Done. Buds and bulbs. <laughs> I'll sell you weed and light and lighting fixtures. That's it. This side can't stop me, cause I can't. <laughs> Play that funky music. Hit the watermelon twenty times. Phenomenal. I love it. Oh. Knight, can you now use the chronicle to go back and smack what's her face? I don't know. Maybe. No, I cannot. Oh no! In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged rock. That's easier, your melon. <laughs> okay. Black light lighting fixtures that. Yeah, we can do that, Fritz. Yeah, absolutely. The art style of this thing is just phenomenal. Griffin? <laughs> Where's Tom? Uh, 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 P... Uh, 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 Tear, uh, Griffin. Damn it. <laughs> the Ryan thing to do. Damn it, Tay. <laughs> I'm in the business of selling cold. <laughs> Yay! That's, that's still Zam. I just want everybody to know that's still Zam. 
And he's still he's still probably yelling about stuff. Zam, what day is it? What 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 are you what are you working on today? Being a better person? I'm proud of you, buddy. Truly I am. And I love you. I do. I do, Zam. Oh, it's a little bat! Oh, God! It's a little bat with a bow! No, Zam. Hmm. I will not. Love allergy season. Mm. Anyway, look, it's a little bat with a bow. Oh my god, where's Bean? Bean's got to see the bat with a bow. <clears throat> I took a screenshot. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. Uh, 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 she uh, <clears throat> papers at the newsstand. Uh, uh. He's not a new stand. He's a new stand. Can't you see the change? I'm waiting for the change. That was a five I handed you. Got caught out in hail today. It's fun. Not really. Oof. I yeah. I. Nah, -uh Tay. Nope. I'm I'm not waiting for a chunk of ice to hit me in the f in the face. No way. <laughs> oh shit! You're a millennial. Ah, well, that's oof. About your thumbnail sized? Ooh. Still keeping my ears up. Oh God, the little bat baby. I love her. I love her. She's my favorite so far. <clears throat> you weren't waiting for it. Just came at you like a spider monkey. And was it all jacked up on Mountain Dew? Fratelli? Okay, listen. <clears throat> An Italian owns the diner. I'm just saying, this is the place to eat in town, alright? You didn't stop to ask. That's fair. Alright. <clears throat> I think I've been everywhere else, so let's, uh, let's head down here. Solomon. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. Oh, dang. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. Yikes. Lucan knew that if he gave up now, he'd never hear the end of it from Rollo. <laughs> oh, I can't go that way then. A library? <clears throat> Where 
Wasn't that the name of the bad guys in the Goonies? It might have been. It's been, boy howdy, it's been several years since I've seen the Goonies. The commercial for butt drugs? Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, I sure have. I sure have. <clears throat> A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Oh my. <clears throat> Settle down, old man. <sighs> A real fine woman. This is Tom is the old man dog trying to to bone this kid's grandma. Sweeter than any jam on earth. Oh my. Uh. Mm. Oh my god, there's a phone booth. Brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. Not your style? Well, that's fair. It didn't see much use. Joey, <clears throat> bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy. Bugs aren't that different from people. That's true. Some people really bug me. I don't know what you're talking about. You went into weep wood. Just be careful where you step. No bug crunching. Got it. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, I don't want to alarm anyone. But we are now at mat capacity. Okay. We've we've hit our... We've hit our maximum mat occupancy. This is the third mat that we've had. That's it's the, all, the, all the mats. No more mats. No more mats. That's it. We are, we are now at mat capacity. Hi buddy. How are you? Maddie's been, no, Zam, you are not. Zam, Zam, you still smell like maple syrup, buddy. Matt dominance. I love it. Matt, what you up to tonight, pal? Luca the first time made me think of it, the little town. Uh, yeah. Matt's rise up and take over. It appeared to be deserted. A deserted beehive, that's sad. That means there's no bees. That means there's no honey. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Just wrapping up work and then going to pick up sushi. <gasps> we had sushi for dinner tonight. Aren't mats for walking and wiping if you don't know that's a no, that's different, Tay. Those are those are different. I'm taking out and beating with a rod. Tay's getting Tay, you're getting a little violent here, pal. Zam, 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 you smell like, you smell like fish. <clears throat> the Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Doop a doop a doop. <clears throat> what the heck is this? <clears throat> oh, don't don't try to reason Tay, don't try to reason with Zam. He's <clears throat> he's just gonna yell about things. Zam's probably over there like, I don't like rice either. Or something, I don't know. Whatever he yells about. The path led into a small hollow at the edge <clears throat> of Weepwood. Watch out for the big bad wolf. Caution, electrified fence. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. What? <clears throat> Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do, so that he could rule out that option. <clears throat> That's fair. As 
Sparks flew from the fence. The light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Ooh. The seaweed and sushi's not your thing. <clears throat> yeah, Bean's not terribly big on it either. Every kid in town knew the old Damn, Valentine's was talking about building. The speech was pretty good. They don't know. Well, the speakers are set among us. Oh my god. Damn it, Zam. This is why you have backup physical security. Physical security is job one. That's job number one. Okay? If someone steals your electronic equipment, even if it's encrypted, once they have it in their possession, it is simply a matter of time before that data is theirs. Because no encryption is foolproof. Physical security is job one. <clears throat> Romance novel level spicy now? Tay, Tay, he's, he's 12. Settle down. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. I mean, there's a character in this game with a little bat, maybe, and she has a little bow in her hair. Super cute. Hope is the super cutest kid. Did she give a kitten? Oh, she loves chin scritches. She's the best kitten. Tom says hi, B. She says hi, Tom. Oh, Loaf says meow meow. She's the best kitten's cat. Oh, only to Tom, though. <clears throat> Zam says hi to himself. <laughs> Lol. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. And Zam's podium is missing. I don't know where it went. I'm confused. That's exactly the kind of thing that Zam would say, too. The water looked almost diseased. It flowed slowly into the woods. What the hell? Yeah. She's the best kitten cat. Best one in the whole world. She's a sweet baby, and we love her. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. There's never been a better kitten. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. Running the disease water is probably a bad idea. Listen, I wouldn't worry about it. It's fine. What's the worst that could happen? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Shit. Ernie, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Shit. Shit. It says shit. Wow. Get out. Out of here. I love you. That will come by. Collar? I mean, maybe. The heavy steel door knocked him <sighs> to the ground. 
disoriented. He that is a shit badge. Imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. This <clears throat> is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. You know what else is a dangerous animal? A cheetah. The fastest land animal on Earth. There's something I can do with that the badge end? now. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that the story deserves. I just know it. That's it? It's done? What are you looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here. Take, take two. There you go. Boy, this did turn dark fast. There was no hand holding Liz. There, there might have been kissing though. Also, hi, and congratulations on getting your homework done. Proud of you. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Okay. Now, let's mm. try something different. <sighs> I can try shit. <laughs> Lockhart, they made this game about you. You really, you really are, you are Luca. <sighs> In the past, <laughs> he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. <laughs> 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 oh, their night vision is about the same as humans? Huh. I didn't know that. <clears throat> There's a lot of good stuff on Nat Geo on Disney Plus. <laughs> Did that little shit just kick me? <clears throat> Amazing. Wild, man. Just wild. Solomon Valentine, current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune, huffed as he brushed off his pants. Wow. So you're a little shit, too. <clears throat> This is done during brighter moon phases when all other things can see them too. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. <sighs> Shame. barbecue chicken tendies i had honey barbecue chimkin nuggies a couple nights ago actually a couple nights in a row because i got pizza hut on wednesday to treat myself and i got uh eight boneless honey barbecue wings and i got a stuffed crust pizza you got chicken wing chicken wing but no hot dog or hot balloon dog. 
No. Or bologna. I did get hot dogs in the grocery order today, though, so that was good. <sighs> oh, God. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress, Valentine. Speak of the devil. <clears throat> oh, my God. Strolls are for commoners. You know what? I'll take you by the snoot and rub your face in some of that shit that I got. So, yeah. Wow. A little shit and a big shit. How about that? <laughs> Liz, as Lolly has tried to explain to us so many times, you're always a 20 minute drive from anywhere else. <clears throat> it's just 20 minutes. <clears throat> Ironically enough, he is actually about a 20 minute drive from me. That road get longer. Ah, there he goes. Ah! The plan was when you're done. <laughs> From a safe distance. You little shit. Can I pick up the one that I... No. <clears throat> you're not a 20 minute drive from St. Louis, you go there. No. Nope. 20 minutes, Liz. 20 minutes. It's science. Google doesn't know. And I have Joyful back. And the sitcom on the internet. The yeah, there you go. There the you go. Warehouse came into view. Rolo began to bounce excitedly. <clears throat> Rumble? Hey, look, it's drums. You like drums. Where, where did you hear that at? Um, from local lollipops in my area. Hmm. Hey, 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 That's hey. Fair. Hey, do you do you know when the band plays? No. Uh, about half a beat behind the drummer. Uh, do you know what it means when the drummer is drooling out of both sides of his mouth? No. It means the stage is level. That's it. Those are the only two drummer jokes I have. <clears throat> That's fair. Yeah. That's... <laughs> That's more than I know, because I'm a drummer, therefore the only thing I know is bang. bang yeah, that's bang. true. <laughs> and this O's. Drum on more of you. Also, sometimes your guts do the rumblies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sometimes my, uh, my, to my stomach makes the rumblies that only hands can satisfy. About some treasure. The hazardous waste. Rollo, it would be my honor to throw you in the trash. You. Squishy bag of squish. 
We got an inch of stagnant sludge. Carl! Well, I, I was hungry, and, well, you know, when, when you crave hands, that's... Why on earth would you do that? I was hungry for hands. Give me a break. Carl! Carl. My stomach was making the rumblies Carl. that only hands would satisfy. What is wrong with you, Carl? Carl. Well, I, I kill people and I eat hands. That's, that's, that's two that's things. Two things. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Bless you. Can I have one of those? No, okay. If you find another one, let me know. Being sneezed, I need someone. I need one of those. I need I need a, a sneeze. Anyone has a spare sneeze that they can allow me to sneeze myself, I would be great, you know. That would be great. <laughs> the societal warning about the stages of development for AIs in the near future. As soon as they get more perfected. Ugh. Yeah, I'm I'm taking it all with a grain of salt, Tay. <clears throat> Hold two phones. Phones? Walkie talkies? Five by five. making deep fakes. Well, that's already starting to happen, pal. That's already starting to happen. Is Bye. that a body? Perny, what the fuck is this game? Say for sure what it is or is not oh, right there. Sorry, Tay. Now listen, I'm not gonna sugarcoat the tech situation for you. Bull held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. <laughs> the shaft. <clears throat> Doctor Prescott, deep engineering. Sure, Tom is a toilet runner. Yes, can confirm. I'm not panicking, you're panicking. Oh boy. That's a hand that is absent of the original body. Real deep engineering. Ooh. Oh man, that's a that's a hand. Renini toilets simply max out their capacity. Well, that's fair. <laughs> Flaming chicken coop. Gotta hand it to Bernie for the selection. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Bernie, don't act like you're not impressed. You made a pun the other day. You can't say shit to anybody else anymore. You still feel bad about it? Yeah, well, that'll happen. Haul ass. Pun ship, that's right. the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, 
Unfinished of sunships. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Deacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. <laughs> Nothing interesting, you know. Oh shit, it's the phone. Sort of ran around a bit. Thought Grandma, that's the wolf in disguise. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. Under no circumstances am I to leave. Gets a quest. Leave the house. Grandma or her grandma here. Anything out here of interest? No. Doing a heck and inspect. That's what Loaf likes to do. She likes to go around and inspect. And then go heck and walk away. She's the best kitten's cat, you see. Taking her to that secure place with the dumpster. And emptying. A faint <clears throat> electronic sound <throat> floated in the air. I don't know. Strange. Okay. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. I'm going, I'm coming, Jesus. Hey, buddy, you stop that. All right. <clears throat> A pit formed in Lucas' stomach. Oh, man. Well, this is not good. This does not look good for the Homestar Runner.
sense. Okay. Curious. Do I have any other? Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. Bracelet. Uh -huh. so it looks like there's a total of six items that I can fish up. Thing and getting paid for it. Tender. All right. Back where the adults aren't. <sighs> yes, Sam. Are you a better person yet? No. Keep trying, buddy. Keep trying. Tender of damn it, Tay. Pines. You want to see the little bat? Let me see if I can. Give me a second to get through this. Her name's Dawn. Yes. I'm a deer. What do you want from me? Look at their little bow. She, she stays up all night and she's always keeping her ears out listening for stuff. She's a little bat baby with her little bow. Look at her little bow. Yeah. I love you. Oh, Loaf's the best kitten cat. Windowless trucks, mechanical noises, strange lights, your typical shady stuff. Hayes getting real deep with Zam and chat. <laughs> I 
she does her best work at night because she's a bat, you see. Not since they made a rule that he can only order decaf. Oh god. <laughs> Woof. Oh, clinging. Strawberry chocolate double scoop waiting for him on the house. Hey. That's true. He does do that. Sharper Valentine, a celebration of excellence. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one Sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow way better tomorrow? Yeah, Tate. Zam's a Dejan from Upcountry. <laughs> Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town just <sighs> Now he's Canada. A scientific experiment called well, that's where Upcountry is. An accident which took Shopper away from us far too <laughs> No, this is Patrick. This day we struggled to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Shopper Valentine lives on... It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Together we will follow his Bird of beef. and grow a bountiful future. Zam, you just keep doing what you're doing, pal. <laughs> that was unhelpful. Oh no, Perny, Zam's the worst. was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Boring. Mycological phosphorescence. Complete loss of interest. Zam, what, Zam, what the fuck are you doing? 
top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser, revered spin-offs. new editions. Simply, a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. Succulent, beautiful. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. Plants? <laughs> the Alibeth has been activated. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. What do I get a Chivo for? Nerd! Ah, yeah, peruse all the library shelves in a single branch. Nice. Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject. Succulent these nuts. Lol got him. Making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Kata was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Oh, it's a little penguin. Oh, a little penguin buddy. <laughs> he gestured to the shelves. <clears throat> bees, I love bees. Bees nuts. Well, got him. Fight. Get wrecked, Zam, or whatever. Wait, wait. Is this like the, like, is Luca doing like the 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 Morpheus come at me thing? Because that's what it looks like. It's kind of what it looks like, yes. I'm sorry, I don't mean to sniffle. It's just what it is. Beck's family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. shifted his feet uncomfortably. Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. was brand new. It didn't seem After the foul harvest, the Valentine's sh The Valentine Mansion both fake
Luca peeked up at the... It appeared to be deserted. chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> so, to answer your question, Zam, yes, this is just full of talking animals. They are the people. Wow. Wow. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city. Oh, shit is about to get Luckily real. From a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well, time to bust out the strange. It is gadget. It is. It's it's actually 2K23, but you know, who's counting? Hi, gadget. How you doing, pal? Morgan and Morgan would be for them. It's true. It's true. Beck stared in silence. The only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. Taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Oh shit. Oh shit. They talk like yaks. Yeah. That, that'll happen. The person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. I do. Was what do you mean, what did I do? Listen. Listen, Iggy came and started it, okay?
Yes, it's Poison Simulator 2K23. Never trust a CEO. Never. Uh oh. Beck glanced toward Luca. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced In -game by a Casio of dread. keyboard. Grin is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 Our Harvest. Oh, Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Grand's wrath. Utopia Virginia Towns edition, that's actually not far off. Oh boy. Luca was alone. The house was empty. <laughs> I don't was trust him. By the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined what his the fuck? Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dead! Look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go! Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run! The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? 
The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. Lolo's voice was coming through more clearly now, but some words were still just static. The signal went silent. Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heart <laughs> marking the passage of time. Lolo's voice began to fade. With that, the signal died for good. What the f- Play an animal game, they said. It'll be have fun and happy, they said. Luke I don't think the, pine, the pines have bacon anymore. I don't think I don't so. believe. I don't believe it. I don't think so. Luca heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Oh yeah, gadget. Yeah, it's it's bad this week. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. <laughs> The three shared a determined look. Three pollinists, yeah. Yeah, gadget, it's Boy, it got bad this week. Oh man, we need some more rain. Oh God. Hi, Dawn. Little bat baby. Look for little toofins. These are little toofins. Reminds you of this mystic short dog woman from Curse. Oh, God, there's a throwback. <clears throat> it's usually not bad, Gadget. It's usually not this bad. It's just extraordinarily bad this, this, uh, this week. Luca wrapped some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know.
Oh man, there's even more stuff. For property rights with respect to be confined CBD and the surrounding area. Oh. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Like, just the fact that there's a literal decision tree, just absolutely beautiful. Love it. Your face is a decision tree. How a decision tree your face? from behind the rocket, revealing itself to Luca. <laughs> Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. <laughs> Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. In fairness, you were a little shit. Clipboards. <sighs> I told you I didn't trust those clipboards. <laughs> it did the knock. It did the knock. Oh my god, there's fucking like 10 of them. There are 11 of them. I can count. like 10 okay 11 is like 10 that's okay i can i can live with that luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window 
Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC, the Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Never trust a CEO. Cite exactly. <clears throat> Real sick. Her smile faltered. Certainly evil organism. I'll take it. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here? Let's put a pin in this. Alright, let's go back here. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? It says you're not in possession of, yeah. He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! You don't resign directly to the CEO, come on now. Luca I would. Swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still holds I'll walk into a CEO. CEO's office and tell him to go fuck himself, but... That's just me, maybe. As long as you got a firm handshake there, bud. Or whatever. The yeah, right? The stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Uh. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Okay, so in this tree, I ended up going to investigate alone because Rolo's sister took him home to do Chorin. But I made it out alive. <laughs> Supported directors you don't fuck with? Yeah. Like the like the council in fucking uh, Hot Fuzz, <laughs> for the greater good. The greater good. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> back another, go back another path. Yeah, 
Yeah, Gadget. So this game has a decision tree. And as you find more of these different like reactions, these charms, you can go you can go back through the literal decision tree and choose the different paths that you want to go. For the Sith Council and Old Republic, nice. Okay. Our jam. Uh. This was in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Oh. Do you like me? Chocolate caramels. Yes, exactly. Hey, thanks for the look, buddy. Mm, Rolo. Hi, Karsis. How you doing, pal? Zombies. It's a whole thing. You have to do a nap one along and along. Listen, that's all right. You know what? That means you did it right, and I'm proud of you. That's Tom, sitting in his chair, sleeping. This game is a secret furry recruitment tool. You know, listen, you could do a lot worse than, you know, furries. Checking the shoes was a nice touch, yeah. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. <sighs> Used to shop at Sharper Valentine. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Got a fancy chair there once. done this one. No, you're just, you're just gonna talk about not doing anything? Yep, yep. Alright, so we've had that conversation. <clears throat> Anger for the past, mistakes not yet made, and a glimmering hope for the future. 
Oh. <laughs> Wild. Oh, I can go in the diner finally. Hey, Mrs. Fratelli. She leaned forward and pinched Lucas' cheek. <sighs> Just like an Italian mom to be like, hey, you need to eat more. Boy, that's the fucking truth. That gets worse when they get promoted to grandma, too. Listen, Tom. I mean, I'm not saying you're right, but I'm also not not saying it. Oh, dang. Why? Why is that, Perny? Why? Lucas shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Oh, there's a kid in. Had a kid in. What should he with? Love came to give kisses and nibbles. Lolly, Lolly, I did the thing where she yawned and I put my finger in her mouth and she chopped on it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, she's so sweet. But it's not bedtime yet, it's Friday. It's not bedtime. No, you gotta go get some of the beans. Yeah. Yeah. She literally came in here because she knows it's normally bedtime. <laughs> She, she knows when bedtime is. She's the best kitten cat in the whole world. <sighs> uh, listen, Perny. Fucking... No reason? None whatsoever? You can't think of a couple of reasons why she reminds you of Roxanne? Memories of that day came flooding back. Whoa! Rox! Couple giant reasons, uh huh. This better not awaken anything in me. That's my next question. Ah. Yeah, Matt, it's it's tree fucking season. That's correct, Tom. Yes, exactly that. That's stretchy. Go on the mirror. Oh, your little paw got caught. Oh, oh baby. Your little paw got caught, so I got to pick you up. She's very sneaky. She's a very sneaky girl. Look how sneepy. And you're right, sneepy girl. It's a loaf of Reno. It's our best baby. My sweet girl? Yeah? That's my sweet girl. Oh, she loves pets. She loves the pets. Some kisses? Oh, yeah, that's good kisses. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank you. You done? Okay. You're all done. She was done. She's like, okay, you're gonna have like two kisses. Best kitten. Chicken sandwich with bacon. Oh, hey, I found the bacon. Ooh.
Hey, look at that! <laughs> the love me tenders. I love it. Jeff slapped the table and gave Luca a toothy grin. You get a burger to satisfy a sweet tooth? A sweet burger and top it out with some grilled cactus. All right, you asked for it, you you weirdo. You got it. Sweet and stabby. All right, what do you want? Aren't you a little? Aren't you a little grouchy to be not getting punched in the mouth? Luca glanced at the empty seat across from Gus. Oof. What do you want? Cold cuts of cold cuts and chili, huh? All right, well, if that's what you want, cold cuts and yeah, that's that'll do it. The hot and gold. I took orders. Dang. Hi, Mrs. Fratelli. Alright, let's go see, uh... Uh, who's the other... Where is the other dude? I would try- I would also try the hot and cold. There he is. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Damn. Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. It's Katy Perry's favorite, the hot and cold. I understood that reference. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. He leaned forward. He leaned in a bit further. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a uh, little wink. <clears throat> he leaned in for a final whisper. Wonder what's in that jam. Wait, what did I get? Melon kicker? Found a way to kick the watermelon... <laughs> I love that two of the ten chivos for this game are directly related to the fucking watermelon. <laughs> Amazing. Holy shit, look at that melon! <laughs> Here, nincompoop. Mm. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. Uh huh. Look at this. Anchovies or pineapple? Pineapple. Welp. <laughs> 
Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Harold? Harold? Sorry? This, Perny, Perny, you've you you've been on Tumblr for approximately forty-seven years. Harold, are they uh, Harold? They're lesbians. Incredible. Also, am I wrong though? to meow 2009 yeah like I said 47 years Harold they're lesbians love it love it we got furries we got lesbians this game has everything oh and there's bacon and bacon don't forget the bacon very important is there a token straight that's on thin ice uh, I'm assuming that's probably Rolo. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob, did you just say I'm a lesbian with you? Furries, lesbians, and bacon. Well, it's, it's part of a well-balanced diet. Uh, alright, I guess I gotta go meet at the big creepy gate. Jeff, what show good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. <sighs> the festival. Old man Valentine used to put on cockamamie shindigs all the time. And where did that get us? As far as I see it, the difference between the old Valentine company and this new perennial harvest outfit. Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. Is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Gadget, you're doing your best with the tools that you have, buddy, and I res I'm, you know, you. It's all you can do. Meet back at the big creepy gate. Yeah, that's the creepy kid in the vest. Is this your house? Ah. 
ominous tone, yeah. Always with the ominous tone. Eat, smile, and nod. Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Back Don't bring up their work. Breath, then gave a firm nod. Firm handshake. I have to know what their work is. I have to know. What kind of work? What kind of Chapter line of work four. are they in? With the mood wills. There's a question. What do you do? What would you say you do here? Edna Moodwell was worried about change. A gardener at heart. She understood the necessity of change. Relied on it. Shankar's making weird threats at you, Lolly, as he typically does. I was gonna say, <laughs> sky blue, water yeah. wet, what do you want? <laughs> they share an OnlyFans page. That's... But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. What you love to pet? I love to pet. I know it's the best. No. I keep getting distracted by the kitten, but she's the best kitten. So, you know, I, I'm not sorry. Almost done. Nelly was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Paper plates, oh no. Dinner went by without much oh conversation. No. As she watched back in Luke. Is there a right game path? I don't know yet, Gadget. I mean, like, so far this one has seemed like the one that has taken the least bad turns. The things she cared about were still here. But it's taken you the job of her several dreams. additional bad times to get degrees. the stuff you need to get this far, right? Yeah, and I think like I think it almost purposefully drives you down certain paths based on the things that it, like the 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 uh, charms that it has you unlock. So yeah, like it really is like a, it's a choose your own adventure game, but it leads you down specific paths first. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She I'm assuming the further along you get, the more choices you'll end up being able to have. I'm assuming, yeah, that's what it's that's what's happened so far. Oh, oh, that's how he. Oh, oh. Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. <laughs> Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Hi, Arjun. How you doing? his face with his sleeve. Oh, no, no worries. Nothing to be sorry for. Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. The game thought I should use it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I also... Uh, uh, there's a service called Nexus, um, and I have a few games that are listed there, so if you want to go get something... Uh, from my Nexus store, you can see this, the games that I have featured there are some of my past favorites, and also you could search the full library. So, I can give you Steam keys and stuff, and it, I get a little kickback from that one. Humble gives a little to charity, uh, Nexus gives a kickback to the stream. Um, so, whichever one you decide. Uh, the default charity that I have set up on Humble, I think, still might be Planned Parenthood. Uh, so, yeah. Um, hey, remember that body that got thrown in the dumpster? That was the old lead researcher of deep engineering. Nod. 
Dun, dun. Cool. Evolving agriculture. Your lead derp engineer. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Luca glanced over to back. She seemed to be holding her breath. Uh oh. Uh oh. <clears throat> mom fight. Mom fight. She slammed her fist into the table. Perhaps harder. Sure, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Nothing. glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Everything's so ominous. Luca wiped his <clears throat> one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break, revealing patches of star-filled summer night. I like Moonlight this. filtered down, shimmering in the treetops. Lucas stopped himself mid-sentence. Ah, spit it out, bub. All right, settle down, Wolverine. Game is trying to trick us into reading. Luca saw back How dare you, game? Literally. Beck grabbed the wrought iron bars and shook the gate. You decadent nightmare house. You were your secrets to me. She's she's like, listen here. Reedy, we have wrenching her hand. Gran tussled her hair back under the face mask. Gran gave Eris a curt nod and disappeared into the night. Gran's doing her own investigating. Ha ha ha. you have it's a big bad wolf lucas sat shivering in the bushes staring at his feet after checking to make sure the coast was clear beck gave him a gentle tug on his sweater bum bum bum
That's my grandma. Tell my grandma. Grand larceny, perhaps. <laughs> wolf. I was a wolf. Oh, I can't go in there right now. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. The clipboard finished writing with a scratchy flourish and looked up. Mr. Nuncreed, arms crossed over his paunch, gave it an exhausted I have a sigh. Scribbled his name so hard, the pen nearly snapped. The clipboards looked at each other for a moment, almost pondering the possibility, then broke into laughter as they walked away. Pawns from chips, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Right in the kisser. the truth. Bye, Mrs. Fratelli. What are you two fuckers doing over here? William Kerr and Gus Valentine proudly surveyed the half-covered festival banner. The mayor gave a half-hearted <sighs> Kerr locked his arm on Gus's shoulder. This game is fucked. Thank you. 
You have an Arnie Palmy? Ooh. I have half of an Arnie Palmy. I have a, a sweet tea. Rollo waggled his head with pride. Tall boy. Rolling the window up is just... Oh, I know that noise. <laughs> Did someone call an emergency meeting? What's happening? Is someone being sus? Three times. Are we throwing Lolly out of the airlock? <laughs> Fine, just don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> and play Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> Lavish. He was not being a good egg. No. He was being a rotten egg. I was always a good egg. Oh, this one moves. junk. Nice. Yes, all she does is sit around all day making jam. Yeah, just jams and jellies. Mm. Folks only bury stuff worth digging up. <clears throat> like corpses. Chapter 6. Secret Lair. Uh, do you get it? Because it's like a layer, but this like a layer of a thing. It's like layers of stuff. Some are forged ahead. Like ogres? Only yes, ogres are like, uh, ogres have layers. 
Luca That's why they're like onions. Under the pale starlight, cautious to avoid any more surprises lurking in the shadows. Reaching home, he slipped quietly into bed, half dreading what they might discover the next day. What day is this? <clears throat> I've been up for 72 hours. Ruffles have ridges. That's true, they do. Man, Ruffles, Cheddar, and Sour Cream. Oh, so good. you were prepared for this i had no idea i keep this here in case of a sleuthing emergency i'm sorry perny do you not keep a deer stalker hat around for a sleuthing emergency Th yes i literally just had this here kind of unprepared fucker do you think I am? Jesus. Yeah, I mean, I guess this makes sense. He is a developer, Amateur. which means that sometimes he has to go on uh, wild and crazy kooky sleuthing adventures to determine that he is the murderer, the victim, and the weapon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Perny, what... Do uh, you think this is fucking amateur hour? Like, what do you... What do you think is happening here? Luca and Beck rolled their eyes as Rollo strutted across the room. Rollo flung open the cabinet. Remember that one time that Bernie thought you were a noob at this? He Apparently so. As a veil of dust hit his face. Okay. Touched. Yes. Yes, he is. Before he could finish, Lucas scrambled up Rollo's back. Every squad needs a good lockpick. Every good lockpick needs a sturdy head to sit on. opened, a perfect porcelain display gleamed in front of them. Their eyes searched for anything amiss, but the only distinct feature was its impeccability. As Beck pulled on one of the teacups, it slanted forward with a hollow click. The entire hutch began to rustle and slide under its own power. Holy shit, there's a secret room. And a loaf under the table. Nines and superheroes. Yeah, Rollo's face looks... Like, the facial expressions in this are great. The art style is just fantastic.
Right. casually spun open a lid and dipped his finger in the jam. He smacked his lips. The brown sugar and ink. Rollo plunged his hand in the jar, fishing out a soggy slip of paper. Rollo offered the slimy note to Luca and licked his fingers clean. A grand jam, Graham? Or thought you wouldn't have the exact hat you needed for a spontaneous bit. Remember when Pernt mistook me for an amateur? I dare say I a noob. Been an absolute buffoon. But no, that's me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the bad joke guy around here. Oh, okay. So Pert is Rolo. Got it. Not a melon. Listen, if I hit it enough, maybe something will happen. It happened when I did it to the melon, and then it happened when I kicked the melon. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. You're playing Valheim? Is that new? I've never heard of that before, Pernt. <sighs> A spider web of string connected photos of people from the town, interspersed with hastily scrawled notes. Like a Viking beacon pines? It's... It's Viking pines? each cabinet drawer in turn. Only one he fingered through the filing cabinet, pausing at a bulging folder labeled Walter. For a long moment, he Walter. just stared at her. Walter. Walter. Also, he said bulging. Some of his old medical files. Luca nodded and caressed the label with his thumb. Oh. Bulging and now caressing. <laughs> they are children. He whistled to himself. God. Looking at the text. Yeah, and they've also done murder in another life. Uh, so what? What's a little murder's fine. What's wrong with a little murder between friends? and mimed holding up an article. <sighs> no, Zam. Damn it, Zam, you were supposed to say murder me, Zundaddy. No, also no. Patient shows further signs of paleness and malaise. When I hear malaise, I think about fucking dead cells. <laughs> I think of my potato chips. All right. Do I have a monocle? No, I don't keep a monocle. I'm not fancy enough to have a monocle. Rolo looked up with heightened surprise. Do you have an eye patch though? And one big gold hoop earring. <clears throat> Rolo's finger traced across the page. several more pages. <sighs> no, no, I don't know. The monocle would imply that I can read. I can't read. I can sleuth. I just can't read. Luca, staring blankly at the cabinet this whole time, spoke softly. Rolo rustled the folder, trying to loose more pages. Luca frantically shoved the remaining cabinet folders, trying to find another labeled Walter. 
This is bullshit. Slam the door shut. Listen, when a 12 year old says this is bullshit, I have a lot of respect for that kid. Is that everything? Alright. They crowded around a worn down old map of Beacon Pines. But every treasure map is an old map. That's true. Not every old map is a treasure map. But every treasure map is an old map. Just like not all pee pee times are poo poo times, but all poo poo times are pee pee times. Can't fault that logic. <clears throat> carefully trace the path with his finger. So there are no new treasure maps, Gadget. They're all old. You, that's 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 just those are the rules. He jabbed down at the end point. <sighs> <sighs> it's just science. Yeah, it's just science. Yep. Uh oh. Luca looked up from the map. Beck flicked off the light, and they became statues in the dark. Overhead, we buried a treasure tomorrow and then drew a map to it. Then that map would instantly age. The kids looked up, the tilt of their necks following each football. It's, once again, it's just science. And suddenly, it stopped. <sighs> Without realizing, they'd been holding their breath. All three exhaled shakily and glanced at each other. A muffled male voice broke the silence. Oh. A final few footsteps uh -oh. reached the entrance above them, and the voice now echoed down the stairs. Hey, it's the, it's the, the it's the the the, the produce stand clipping. guy. Also, yes. It sounds like you're trying to solve a mystery. Every new step. Flanders. Stupid sexy Flanders. At the bottom step, the man paused, squinting to search the room for signs of life. Rollo shifted suddenly. Luca gave him an intense, chastising look and whispered through clenched teeth. It was too late. Oh no. Rolo was already inching toward the stairway. He screeched as he charged toward the shadowy figure. Oh, Rolo, no. Play me in chicken coop. <laughs> if you pesky kids. With all his weight, Rolo tackled the man to the ground. There's anyone From there? From the dark corner, they saw something move. Luca scrambled to the hunched figure on the ground. Pressing his fingers to the man's neck, he sighed with relief. It was clobber in time, apparently. As Beck flicked back on the light, Luca and Rollo both gasped in stereo. Aha! It is! Chapter 7. I'm already up to chapter 7. The Interrogation of Hiram Tolliver. Still unconscious, Mr. Tolliver slumped heavily in a shoddy old chair. His hands were bound with rope, his feet tied with some loose string. The kids huddled in a circle, discussing their plan. One thing was certain. They couldn't just let Mr. Tolliver go. They needed to know what he was doing in Luca's house. After some deliberation, it was decided. Classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. W chill cop. Chill cop. Man. Luca walked 
calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Rollo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. <sighs> okay, Anita. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with scared looks. <sighs> Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. <laughs> Luca gestured to the corner. <laughs> Luca looked again to roll one back. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he <laughs> Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. Motherfucker. He punctuated his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Oh. Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. Oh, they looked Jesus. bewildered at each other. <laughs> <clears throat> they heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. Son of a... Well, we certainly aren't going to <sighs> find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. Go back and change this. Well, time to bust out the tickles. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tisha's arms. Well. Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. <sighs> Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Hey, get out of here, you fox eared asshole. Kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Uh. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Chapter 4 Fox asshole ear, yes. The best policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching <sighs> his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern.
Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. Bacon pound, you want bacon? I love bacon. I also want bacon. Okay, well, go grab us some bacon, bud. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatient. Get some for Lolly too. He wants some bacon. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, <clears throat> looking straight through Luca. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. <clears throat> Roxy drew herself up. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Luca motioned to the phone booth. Uh huh. Stay crafted and bacon, yes. Hi buddy, how are you? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Uh, Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncree. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. Shame. If Mr. Nuncrete was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Luca just starts loading a shotgun. Shame. So much stuff. Well, that's that's how updates work, buddy. They they update things. Mr. Nuncrete raised an eyebrow. shoulders slumped. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncrete's hand clamped down on his shoulder. With a firm shove, Nuncrete manhandled Luca into the phone booth. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air. 
and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Wow. That's it, huh? Holy shit. Yeah, this game is full of bad endings. Let's see, we've seen one, two, three, four bad endings so far. We haven't gotten to a good one. But see, again, and they it's all like, want sun chips. And they all want sun chips. But that's the thing, like, it keeps going. Like, it keeps. What the hell? Well, we don't get to see all of them, because, uh. That's it. We're, uh. We're done for the night. We're all done. Herney, what the fuck? This game is really good, though. Holy shit, this game is so good. It's a really, really good game. Um, Alright. That'll do that. Oh, yeah, Perny, thank you again for the pick. That was that was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. Um, Alright, so... On Sunday, I'm going to continue playing Bear and Breakfast. Uh, we're still going to do more of that this week. Uh... It, yeah, this is a really cool game. This is a really cool game. Yeah. Thank y'all for hanging out. This was great. I really enjoyed this. This is like kind of spoopy and mysterious. And I love, again, like the choose your own adventure kind of aspect here. So this has been really good. Your face is a choose your own adventure. Ooh, got him. Who's just a sweet kitty? Oh, all right. Who are we going to go see? Who are we going to go see tonight? Uh, D's doing stuff. I feel like we just saw D. Didn't we just go see? No, we haven't seen D in a few days. Last time we saw D. Oh, it's been a couple weeks. Don't take your finger off the page. That's the rules. If you don't take your finger off the page, then it doesn't count. Is under streaming? Oh, I wouldn't watch him. No, that guy's that guy's the worst. Yeah, let's go see D. Yeah, let's see. Here we'll go CT. Okay. <clears throat> Louie. Louie, pal, you made it in. You made it in just under the wire. Well done. Well done. Well done. All right. Vegeta, no! Vegeta, yeah! Fantastic. All right. Hey, uh, thank y'all for hanging out tonight. Again, this was really, really great. Uh, I will see you on Sunday for more Bear and Breakfast, and hopefully my nose will be unplugged by then. Uh, but until then, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and uh, I'll see you on the flip side. Bye.